So this short film is inspired by research undertaken in Lambeth around people's participation in community food growing. And Lambeth was a really good place to explore this as there's so much going on in the borough. For example, there's over 200 food growing groups and there's lots of different organisations and initiatives supporting this. So yeah, I think Lambeth has really got the food growing bug and I think it all stems back to about 10 years ago when people in Brixton started to say right how are we going to feed ourselves we need to grow more food and they started doing it for political reasons and then actually found they quite liked it that it was a great way to come together and meet one another and they learn about food and had connections with nature and all that kind of thing in fact when when people first started sometimes it wasn't very good that things failed so we realized there was a huge value in networking people learning from one another so we formed incredible edible Lambeth and that's, we, we still do that. And I spoke to people um, involved in community food growing projects supported by the Myatsfields Park Food Hub and the Council's Edible Living Project. Um, so I'm part of a group of local people. We got together in about 2002 because we wanted to renovate the park. At the same time, the, the um, greenhouse was still sitting here, um, derelict really. So we just moved in, we had some community volunteers, we cleaned up the space um, and we just started um, growing vegetables really. And then we began to understand more and more that um, the, we're, the park is surrounded by local estates, um, where, which are a food desert. They have very poor access to um, healthy, affordable food, and also hardly anywhere that people can meet up. Um, and they're very built up, not very green places. Uh, it's a very diverse community. People have a lot of knowledge about food and about food growing from all over the world, and we just wanted to benefit from that. Um, so we started offering, we got some funding, we employed a community gardener, and he offered, um, seedlings and uh, training at people's sites and small grants to 10 groups a year um, so we built um, a, a lot of connections with local people. So it kind of is the way, basically it's where people are getting out and things that people may not actually, you're not always aware of that you go out there, but people will say, you know, that's the one time they get out or they meet or they get involved. Or other people will talk about on their estate, and it's like Vinny was telling me he was on Tulsa estate, that, you know, people were just sitting there indoors all the time. Now there's someone to sit, he's got a polytunnel on Tulsa estate, and people can sit there and just, you know, there's activities going on, you can just join, you don't have to do a lot, but you're kind of part of things. You know, people used to grow their own in this country uh, as well, but because of industrialization, because of concreting of the, the garden, uh, you know, nature has moved away far and far away. So young children nowadays, you know, they bring them to the green and say, this is uh, cabbage, this is, they, they used to see it outside their house. So bringing back nature to people into the big cities is one of the, the goals of growing your own. You know. I think um, gardening is also great for people's well-being because um, it's a side-by-side -side activity so they're not forced to sit and face somebody else. It quite, uh, you can make friendships with people while you're working alongside each other. Um, just working with the soil and being outside is very good for mental health. We have a lot of mental health groups that come and work in here as well. Yes, yeah, so the suggestion about do, doing food growing was a colleague of mine, Ivor Picardo. Um, following our initial um, engagement we had planting wildflower uh, which um, he said would be far more practical and useful for residents if they could get into food growing um, our, and it fits in very well with our main uh, agenda which was to just get residents more engaged with what's going on in their communities and specifically to take ownership of their estates so we've been extremely impressed with what residents have done so far. We won't just do this if we think it's a good idea. Residents have got to come to us and say, um, actually, we're interested. So we need a core group of residents to start it with. We will then offer uh, paid support to um, show them really what they need to be doing to make, um, basically make their gardens grow. Um, but, um, and that will be repeated for um, at least two sessions, if not more. Um, and we also, we buy all the um, equipment that's required, uh, including sort of um, furnishing uh, raised beds, etc. But, um, so there is a budget, um, 
but we are looking for residents to take it on from there and make these as sustainable as possible. I go to different housing and housing estates in Lambeth to go and do gardening with different residents and so on the estates there's um, raised beds that normally have been built by the council um, over the years to, to provide a growing space for the residents and tenants. So part of the job is to meet them, to facilitate them using the space, um, teaching them new skills for gardening, um, growing their own food. I think also encouraging the idea of um, organic gardening so tr not really using pesticides but yeah so it's it's giving it's empowering people to to start uh, sort of inhabiting areas of their estates really i think there was a uh there's so many different nationalities living on these estates and people have that background of food growing maybe from where they're from originally. Uh, there's definitely a feeling of not having any space to grow flowers or food and there's all this untapped green space that's available and they're walking past every day and the idea that this could be uh, shared communally is just such a good one. You know, circumstances of my, my personal circumstances meant that it kind of gave me an opportunity to sort of vent my spleen on the soil, <laughs> dig it out, and um, yeah, it 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 was it was therapeutic, and I think good for mental health. Getting involved in food growing activities in Brixton, where I live, has helped me sort of reconnect with nature and, and food source and I think that adds to a more holistic lifestyle, healthier lifestyle and a bit more balance in my it's you know it starts to impact your your food choices as well you start to eat things which are in the right seasons and it sort of makes sense and I think that's a healthier way to live for sure. As a what do they, what do they call us nowadays? O A P? Yeah, old age preacher. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm enjoying myself. I'm really enjoying that time. I'm growing uh, tomato, pumpkin, runner bean, corns, uh, potatoes at this present time. She's but she's our gardener. Oh, okay. <laughs> So she is like every month she come? Yeah, once a month. Once a month she comes and we plant things, lots of vegetables with the little children together. Go, because you know what you're eating then, don't you? When you grow your own things. And it, I think it tastes better as well. Person, because I've, I've come from Jamaica, I've never seen nobody growing. I'm from the, in the country part they grow things, but not in the you from the city? Yeah. And, oh. and um, we go market and buy things, so if you live in the country it's better because you can grow your own things then and you so keep yeah. those together, isn't and it? And I'm learning a lot from Pendic, from Poppy. <laughs> Open environment, you know, fresh air, and if you sit in a green, your mental status is different than sitting at home and staring at television. And gardening has a well-being effect on humans. Being out in the fresh air has been very helpful to to get that sense of uh, well-being that's very much needed. And it's, it's great to to know how to do that and you, you waste less food because you know how much effort it takes to to, to, to actually grow it and, and get it to your plate. Most cultures communicate or connect through food. It really brings people together and I think that's why it's quite accessible and it's, it gets people out of their perhaps confined spaces as well and into shared spaces. Since we started tidying it up, there's an awful lot more people going in there now. You know, uh, not just from our estate, from off the estate. It just gives them something to, to do and they go down there, chill out, meet people, get to know each other. Not necessarily directly involved. The fact that they are taking more pride about their estates um, we think is a very important, um, um, if you like, um, byproduct of the food growing um, activities because um, it does mean that people are taking more care of where they live.
taking more pride in where they live. You know, so for today's been a lovely sunny day, for example, and somebody I was with in an office setting, said, oh, well, it's a lovely weekend, I've got to get away from London. I wouldn't think about getting away from London. I think I'm going to go into my community garden, into my local park. I've got lots to do that. The plants will be enjoying it. Thank you.